So we're going to go back to Structural Align and revisit that a little bit. You've seen some videos that I've done <coughs> on how to create a Structural Align using sighting. I've got sighting in a couple of different videos. You can check them out over here. And then <coughs> what we want to do is complete that circuit. So once you have the guidelines that you would create from sighting and using Structural Aligns, now you need to know how to complete the actual drawing with the details and the fun part. So one of the things that I see with my students a lot of times is that they do all this work to measure their proportions, to make sure things are aligned in the correct way, and they create this guideline on their page, and then they kind of ignore it, and they just draw outside of the box that they've created. So I want to show you in a couple of different examples how I'm going to use those guidelines to draw in the details. That's the fun part. So let's take a look at the page here. The first one that I'm going to work on <coughs> is this cup that we used a lot in our sighting videos. It's really plain, and I'm not sure the best angle to show it, maybe like this, will be able to see it in a similar way as my drawing. <coughs> now, my proportions should be similar, although my scale the size might be different on my page, and that's okay. So it doesn't matter if the size is larger or smaller, that's the scaling, but my proportion, so the relationship between this size and this opening, and the relationship between these two together, the front, need. so does that make sense? The top and the side, and the top and the side, those relationships need to be similar, <coughs> even if, the size on my page has been drawn in larger. Okay, whew, that was tough to explain today for some reason. Um, okay, so now I have the box, and I've already checked with citing that my structural lines here are correct in their relationship between the sizes. Now I need to actually draw in the shape that you guys are seeing. I'm gonna move this photograph so you can see it a little bit clearer. And I'm holding it <coughs> so that from the camera that's above me, you guys can see a similar angle here that I've drawn in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to sketch the opening in that box shape. And usually my ellipses at first, they don't look perfect. Look how flat that is right there. I know I've got to shrink it down. And oftentimes <coughs> I've got to rotate my page in order to be able to draw an ellipse well. The other thing I can do is I can use some of those other structural line tips that I've given you, like how to get symmetry. <coughs> I can mark that I want this height of the widest point to be equal to this one. So that helps me to make an immediate change. And that already looks a lot better. <coughs> So you can see I draw a lot of wrong lines until I get my right line in there and then I kind of darken that up. And now, <coughs> if I find that I'm confused by my incorrect lines, those helper lines that helped me to get to the right space, then I can thin out the herd and I can take those lines away that don't look so great. until I get to <coughs> a set that looks a little bit better. Now I can see that this part is actually higher on the left than on the right. So I'm going to make those quick corrections too because I think that helps. <coughs> the other thing you can see is that with my quick tips for ellipses video, we're referring back to that one, this front curve is a little bit deeper than the back curve, and that's because of the effect of perspective. You can follow along with my um, two-point perspective ellipses video as well, and that's going to give you a lot of help with that. And so now what I need to do is I need to draw down the sides. Now this is where I usually see students drawing the bottom of the curve down here. <coughs> but I worked so hard to determine that that was the correct height. So what I want is I want the bottom of the curve to hit in the center here, and then my curve for the bottom of this cup.
cup is actually going to fit within the structural line that I created. And now I'm going to take my tough stuff eraser here <clears throat> and I can erase my guidelines, my structural line boxes, so that I can see the actual shape. And you can see now that I have a great looking cylinder. It matches relatively closely and <clears throat> it's not a little bit wonky, like it's not leaning over to one side. I've got my um, relationship between the opening and the height more accurate, so that's a great way to do it. Let's take a look at another one that's a little bit more complex. So I've got a structural line drawing here for Tomba the horse. <clears throat> and you can, I'll darken it a little bit. It's just a really rough guide. That kind of tells me where the largest parts of his neck, his cheek, his muzzle, his ears are. And that's all I've really focused on in my structural line. <clears throat> This one I didn't measure, I didn't take the time to measure it. So if I were working on this and actually wanting to complete it and draw in the um, shading and make him look realistic, I would take the time to use sighting because I'm guessing that these gaps and these gaps are not accurate. I probably need to make some changes there. <clears throat> However, I wanna show you that what you can do is now that you have this outline, you can actually just throw in some of those curves and really quickly, he's gonna start to look like a horse. My ruler's under there. <clears throat> Even if he doesn't look perfectly exactly proportionate to Tomba, he's gonna look like a believable horse. And that's usually my goal when I'm drawing, is that I want to draw something that looks like it could be a horse, even if it doesn't look <clears throat> mirror image like this horse specifically. That one's kind of messing me up. Let's try that again. <clears throat> Had a lot of helper lines on that one, didn't I? Here I would draw in his hair. It's a little tuft. And then here's more specifically the curve of his ear. <clears throat> and the curve of his neck. Some of his main hair there and then I can start to work in the details. So you can see that with a few simple lines of my structural lines, then I was able to add in those curves and right away he starts looking more horse-like and less like a robot horse when I had my structural lines for him. So hopefully that's gonna really help you guys out. <clears throat> Again, remember it's worth taking the time to do the sighting work, to work on your proportions, to make sure that your placement and alignment of everything is accurate, and then get your structural lines down so that you can check and balance those with your sighting. And then you wanna go in and draw in the fun stuff. If you start with just the fun stuff, a lot of times you're gonna wind up with details in the wrong place. So this is the final loop. You get to do the details now, and that's what we're all here for. So hope this helps you out. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Thank you all so much for watching. More videos are coming soon, so if you wish to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and do that. And also you can check out my website, lzmstudio.com.